do you have a lot of people lined up? I do. I have a lot of Six Flags people lined up this year too, which is good because I've never touched that event at all on any podcast. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then nice. a couple Ghost Town, ton of Carnival. That's 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 good this year because in 2019 we got like one Carnival person, mm-hmm. where this year we have like a lot of Carnival people lined up. So that's going to be cool. Um, nice. I think we have a few Hollow. Um, no one for, from Forsaken. Um, okay. I've got a few. I think maybe some Hayride. And a few HHN. Nice. So, I mean, we got a pretty good stack lineup. I, I'm more excited. Uh, you know, it's always good to talk to people that have been on it before and, and to see what their mm-hmm. experiences were um, this year. But I'm excited to, to dive into some Six Flags people because um, it, it's a lot of fun. That, I mean, I had tons of fun at that event. So I feel like Six Flags is relatively untapped. And I know, like, you've been covering them a lot. Yeah. And so has uh, Art Dracula. He's, he's, like, fell in love with with the 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 clowns this year dude same here man it's it just seen them more the the exile brothers man they're so fucking funny bro like every time i've come to the event they've always like taken care of me gotten me some of the funniest footage and we even did one night where i bought them penalty flags and and that was a lot of fun so (laughs) i i i those guys have taken care of me and it's been it's been a fun ride so Nice. I, I can't wait to get them on the show finally and, and talk about their. I'm pretty sure they got stories galore. So, yeah, those guys they freaking lead that zone. So, all right, let's get let's get let's wipe the rust off. Let's do this, man. It's been two sure. years since we've done a character appreciation month. So let's That's let's crazy. let's get it let's get it back and going. And for not how I wanted to do it because of my work hours, but it is what yeah. it is. No, you're you're chilling. All right, let's do this. Here we go. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is returned. After two long years, Scaractor Appreciation Month is back, and it is in full gear now, man. I mean, we have the honor and the privilege to kick it off with our buddy Vincent, uh, who this year, he's got a character on Ghost Town that is we, we're going to dive deep into, man, but... If you guys are new to the channel, before we start this podcast, subscribe with that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, you're going to want to stick with us all month long in November. We're going to be interviewing different scare actors from different haunts, different scare zones. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to hear their experiences. You're going to hear what they thought uh, they did amazing this year, uh, some funny stories, and just the behind the scenes of who their characters are. Like I said, kicking us off with Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Um, is none other than our buddy Vincent on Ghost Town Streets. Vincent, it's been a it's been a cool minute since we've had you on the show, man. How how you been? It's man? been a while. I've yeah. I've been pretty good, you know, navigating the the global community and, and whatnot. Oh man, it's uh, you know, for starters, we got it. We got to open up, and this is going to be the question you're going to hear a lot on repeat for Character Appreciation Month. Is uh, you know, after two years uh, of you know, no scary farm. Obviously, we ended in 2019, um, mm-hmm. went into 2020 was hit with the pandemic, <laughs> no yeah. scary farm in 2020 coming back 2021, man. How was it, you know, knocking some of the rust off and, and just getting back out there and, and just doing it, man. You know, for me, it, w- it was a lot of fun. I will say that, um, I came into to this haunt probably like a, a lot of monsters in one of like the worst shapes that I've ever been in. <laughs> um, like I def I definitely put on that that game that that quarantine fifteen plus some, <laughs> um, so it it like physically it was a little it was a little hard but like mentally and like getting back into it and actually going out there and scaring, um it it, it was like it never left, um and I think I think part of that has to do with like the uh, kind of the mindset that I came into to this year's haunt with of, you know we didn't we didn't get to have it last year. Um, so we're just going to go out there and party and, and have fun. Like <laughs> we're, we're like, we're going to care, but, but we're here to have fun. We're here to scare. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're just, we're here to put on a good event. You know, Sammy and I repeatedly talked about, uh, being there opening night and sadly Sammy couldn't be there opening night, but I was there opening night. And it was one thing to just kind of feel the energy when the, the opening ceremony hits and everyone runs out, you know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. It's, it's. It, it was truly unreal. You could tell and you can feel the excitement of both uh, scare actors and, 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 and audience, man. We just, we were all there cause 
we've missed this event. We yep. definitely uh, love this event, and it just felt good to be back at that event. Um, going into that, like, opening ceremony, man, uh, what were your thoughts, you know, like, oh, shit, like, this is actually happening. Like, you know, like, what, what, what was going through your head when that was happening? It was a lot of fun. Um, so, like, you know, it, it's a different perspective, you know, when you're a monster versus when you're a guest, right? So when right. you're a guest, you're staring down fog alley, and all you see is fog. Yeah. When you're a monster, you're kind of back there, um, you know, waiting, waiting for our queue to start heading down the fog. And it got, it got, I, for, to me, it got really quiet, right? So it got really quiet. All you hear is the fog machines and then you, it's just silent, but you could feel the excitement from the monsters, but you could also feel the excitement from the guests, right? That, that kind of happy anxiety where it's like, oh, cool. Like this is, this is about to happen. You know, we're about to get get something back that we haven't had in, in you know quite some time. So it was it was really exciting. And like the best way to describe it is that it was like it was palpable, like not to sound corny, but like you could definitely feel it in the air of just, all right, cool. This is happening and I'm ready for it. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I could tell you from an audience point of view, man, uh, you know, we got there opening day and we're waiting in line outside the park uh front gates you know the excitement's building man you can you can see that you know the decorations are up which automatically gives you that vibe of like okay it's halloween it's it's mm -hmm. time it haunts her back like we're back full force and stuff and then we walk in uh waiting and fog you know waiting in the area where you know they rope us off and stuff and just kind of seeing the fog you know just it, it was cool to you know if you got if anyone went to taste of halloween last year when they did their tasting events uh during the pandemic you know, we got to get a feel of that fog again, and and they kind of did a little a little love letter to Not Scary Farm, saying, uh, you know, pretty much, even though it's not happening this year, we want to still give you some fog because mm -hmm. the fog is a a a, a, a staple at, at Not Scary Farm. Without not without fog at Not Scary Farm, it it just wouldn't be the same. Um, especially in Ghost Town, and we got the fog last year, and the and it just kind of really was a bittersweet moment where you just kind of miss the uh, environment. You know, you can kind of hear things in your head of different characters talking and you can hear mm -hmm. screams and stuff in your head and uh, of the audience reacting into to certain scares and whatnot. And I just kind of can see everything happening, even though it wasn't happening. Yeah. Fast forward to 2021 and not only can I see it happen, I can hear it happen. The excitement's there for me and it's just, it's just, it just felt great to be back. It felt great to see everyone there scaring and it, it just felt, it just felt normal again. You know what I mean? It just, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a while since we had a sense of normal. And I remember looking over at my friends when we were at not scary farm and just going, man, this just feels right. This feels normal. This feels good. Like it feels good to get back out here and see everyone scare, man. What was the buildup? Obviously, you know, auditions happen, going into auditions, orientation, orientation leads to you know some some training some training leads to opening day what was the the excitement level for you leading into all that thinking wow we're actually going to do it this year like that you know we're already taking the necessary steps to get to day one like how did that feel building up for you so for me it was more anxiety um and it wasn't it, it was more anxiety because i was debuting this this new character concept that i had um, so for me, um, you know, I, it was in my head, I was like, all right, like I need to get my costume together. I need to figure out, you know, who's going to do my mask. What, you know, what's it going to look like? Uh, what kind of, you know, color scheme am I going to go with? Am I going to go for, for cooler colors or warmer colors? Um, you know, like how do, how do I want to look? Do I want to look aggressive and angry or do I want to blend in with the shadows a little more and be a little stealthier? Um, so in terms of, of opening um, and, and getting back to Scary Farm, that's kind of where my mind was at. I wasn't even thinking about, you know, oh, cool, like we're returning back to normal. In my head, it was already like almost, almost like go time where it's like, all right, oh, cool, like this is happening. Um, now I have to get everything ready. <laughs> right. So it, it, it was, it, it gave me a little anxiety, but like at the same time, I was still happy to, to be able to do it, right? So, right. you know, it was, yeah, it sucks that, you know, I'm feeling all this pressure to, to get my costume done and to, to put the final touches on my character. But then like you, you look back and it's like, Hey, like you're getting to put your costume together and put the final touches on your character. 
This means that not is happening. This means that you get to go, you know, debut your character. This means that you get to go scare in Ghost Town, the the realest of all the scare zones, like yep. the o, the OSG there, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just it it was exciting, man. Like I, I was just ha- I was just happy overall. Happy to be like back, man. Exactly. I love hearing that. It, 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 you know what? It really does. Uh, it warms all of our hearts to hear that because you guys put in 110% every night and that's not even exaggerating. That's the truth. Like you go out there, uh, Thursday through Sunday, you know, whether it's the slowest night ever or the most packed sold out night, which they've had a couple this season. Um, we're not, and as of this recording, it's before the weekend before Halloween. So I don't even doubt Halloween's probably going to sell out this weekend, especially this Saturday. Um, but it's just to see a couple sold out nights, you know, and everything, uh, you know that you guys are doing a damn good job because, you know, you mm-hmm. have not only people recording you throughout the season, but you have word of mouth of, of people talking about the event and, and wanting to go with their friends and everything and just have a good time. And all that is because they want to come see you guys. You know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. It's because you guys put on, I would say, one of the greatest, if not the greatest goddamn show in the world. And well, thank you. It, it really, really, it's not even an exaggeration for us. We've we've stated this many times on the channel. Knots to us on this channel is our favorite event, and that's because they have some of the greatest scare zones, some of the most detailed and well written mazes, and and the people that who get to scare in them bring that story to life. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's just a great time. Speaking of bringing stories to life, man, uh, you debuted your new character this year. I want to dive a little deep into that. Um, what, right. what's the name of the character? What's the idea of the character? And when did you come up with the idea for this character? So I came up with the idea for this character at the end of the 2019 season. Um, so if you go back and you watch the, uh, the first podcast with me, um, I, I don't even remember what I, what I said my character was. I think I was like, oh, like I was trying to be like, uh, the, the, uh, Marshall from Tombstone or whatever, but like it didn't play out. Um, but I, I essentially I was just like spooky townsperson number twenty seven, right? Like I was just <laughs> this generic like ghost town, you know, townsperson. And it was, I think my uh, my character sheet like when I got hired and went to wardrobe and stuff, it literally said like male gruesome. So I was like, all right, well, I don't want to do that next year. Like I want to I want to create something that stands out that like still obviously fits within the parameters of of ghost town um and i was actually backstage one night and uh i walked past a building and i was like oh like there's a mailbag up there i was like that's pretty cool and then like i thought about i was like huh there's there's like no mail carrier in ghost town i was like oh like i'll do that next year right the look i thought of of you know how how could i work this this you know story that i want to create into the mythos of ghost town and i thought huh well i'll make it so that my character can't read And he's really bad at directions. So he is directionally challenged and he is illiterate. (laughs) So um, you put that together with the job of a Pony Express writer and mailman, and it creates this really funny backstory. (laughs) So um, that's kind of how my my character came into existence. And I do understand that uh, Ghost Town, uh, you know, within Not Scary Farm, as well as Ghost Town Alive, kind of has almost like a... uh, somewhat of a, of a Tarantino timeline right. where, you know, the, the history of, at, of Calico and Knots isn't necessarily the true and recorded history, you know, as, as we know it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say that um, my character still is a little bit in development and flux. Um, however, the, the fact that I am illiterate and I'm directionally challenged, like those are, those are definitely part of my, my character. <laughs> um so I am technically uh, still this year. Um, my character sheet still says male gruesome. Um, however, like I did want to create this, you know, this character and bring it to Ghost Town. So in my head, even though my character sheet says male gruesome, I am the Pony Express slash mailman. There it and is. Yeah, there it is. There it is, man. No. It's it's the birth of a new character. That exactly. obviously so, this year was on trial run, you know, you're trying to still yep. figure out your kinks. You're trying to figure out, you know, how you can ad- incorporate different things to it. Um, one of the things that you did 
if I'm cool to talk about this, is uh, you actually would give out letters to people, um, yes. certain people that either you knew, um, you actually thought deserved one or whatever. Um, and it was so cool because, you know, we, we got to get uh, a couple of letters for me and Sammy. And um, the fun part about it is, you know, the standard letters you give out to, like, you know, everyone. It actually tells uh, a story that's going on within that Calico Ghost Town's uh, storyline, um, which is really cool to read that. And it, and it tells more about your character. You know, it talks more about what's going on around you and whatnot. I was a really fan, a big fan of that. And anyone who knows me, yeah, interactivity, one of my favorite things. So if I get to bring something home that a character gave to me and read it and like be more immersed into the story even after I leave the event... It's mm -hmm. one of the best uh, things that I can uh, remember. And then we got, you know, obviously, you know, if you knew, if you knew people, you, you would give them mm -hmm. some, some cool personal ones. And, and we got a couple personal ones that were really, really, really cool and thoughtful. And um, so I, I really like that aspect of the character. When mm -hmm. did you know you wanted to do something like that, to approach people and just go, like, give them to tell more of a tale of, of Ghost Town? So I, I wanted to stand out, right? So I wanted to be different and I wanted to, to get away from, you know, spooky, spooky towns person number 27. <laughs> so I knew that coming into this year, like, I'm not going to be able to say, oh, like I want to be the mailman and, it, and Knox is going to say, okay, awesome, cool. You're the mailman, right? You have to do something to distinguish yourself from everyone else in, within ghost town, right? So, um, for me, I started thinking, I was like, okay, well, how am I going to portray a, a mail carrier? I was like, okay, like I can, I can make myself a little satchel. Um, but you know, how, like, how am I going to act it out? Right. So um, if you, if you noticed the uh, part of like my character walk is I almost, I, I am kind of always like reaching back towards my, my bag, or I, I always have my hand kind of hovering over my bag and one hand kind of out. And that's just kind of me like looking around and searching for, you know, who, who am I going to deliver this mail to? Mm -hmm. I have to be ready. I have to be fast because I'm supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to be on this tight schedule as a, as a Pony Express rider. I got to get the mail to, to whoever it's going to, and I can't, can't really lolly get Right. Mm -hmm. So I tend to move pretty quick within ghost town. Um, and I do have, you know, that mail bag. And I started thinking, I was like, okay, well, how else am I going to stand out? Because, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. Like I can do all those things, but to some people, I still may be, you know, spooky person number 27. <laughs> right. Um, so I thought, you know, how can I make this interactive in a way that, you know, guests are going to remember me um, and remember this interaction. And this kind of goes back to uh, what, like one of the reasons why I work on, right? So uh, as a guest, before, before I started working, you know, I'd, I'd come to knots and I'd see, you know, monsters. And this was a time before annual passes. So it was literally, all right, like you, you come, you're coming for sure once, once a year, maybe twice if you saved up enough money throughout the year. Um, so, you know, you come, come to these events and you see these monsters just absolutely destroying people. And it's like, wow, like that's so awesome. That's so cool. You know, and, and it's one of those things where it's like, Hey, like I want to do that one day. Right. So I figured, you know, I like, obviously I can do that. And, but I was, you know, I was thinking like, you know, okay, like, like, yeah, I can scare people and like inspire someone that way. But I was like, how cool would it be to get something from a monster? Um, so I was like, you know, if like, yeah, I can go up and scare you and you're always going to remember that interaction or, or you might not. Right. Right. But if I'm able to give you something that you can take home, put it on your wall, you're going to have that for, you know, quite some time. Right. And so I'm, I'm don't want to like reveal what the letter says, mm -hmm. but it is in character and it is time period appropriate. And it does, I will say that it, it relates to scary farm as a whole. Right. Um, so if, if you pay attention to, you know, what the, what the words are saying, you can kind of put two and two together and realize that, this whole thing is one big Easter egg, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool. You know, if you're a fan of the event, if you, if you do have a pass and, you know, you do get to come night after night, it's like, okay, cool. This is, this is something that's, you know, meaningful to me because I care about the event. Whereas 
if you if you're just coming one time and you happen to get this you're like oh my god this is so cool like can i come back and get another one yeah and so like it it's 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 making that you know that connection one way right where it's oh cool like this was this was such a cool little interaction and i got something from knots like this is like I, a monster gave this to me right secretly like, uh secretly uh Vincent was talking to the marketing team. How can we bring more people back with more? How can people know, get more right? people to buy more tickets? How can we get more people to buy more tickets? Marketing team, me. you already have my information. I'm already in your system. Um, but no, it, it really is one of those things where it's like, you know, th- like this is so cool. And, and to, it, it makes the, the average, you know, fan of the event and it kind of elevates them to that you know, that hardcore fan where it's like, Oh, cool. Like this was really cool. I'm, you know, I want to come back now. Right. Uh, another thing so, new for you this season, obviously. And it's something that we knew that you could do. It was just a matter of getting past your first year and then getting out and doing it. Uh, you're sliding this season. Um, yes, sir. I've gotten to see a couple of, of dope slides from you and, uh, got some on camera, uh, and whatnot. And, um, what, what's been the, the, be- the best part about getting the slide this year, man? I know you got to see a lot of people do it last year and I know you oh, really man. wanted to get out there and do it so bad. And, and now this is your year to do it. What, what's been the best part? Just everything. I mean, <laughs> like slide, like sliding is just so cool. And like to be able to do it, you know, at knots, it's, it's just amazing. So for me, it means a little more because I, I was such a huge fan of the event, um, you know, growing up and, and like, like scary farm is hundred percent. The reason why I'm scaring today. Right. Right. Um, I didn't really go to universal until after I had already started going to scary farm. Uh, six flags was always too far for me. And, you know, knots was I like growing up, I was always told not scary farm is the scariest thing that you'll ever do. So when I was finally like old enough to go, um, I loved it. Right. Mm-hmm. And seeing the people, you know, the former monsters slide, I was like, Oh, that's awesome. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> so, right you know, you'd go on YouTube and, and try and search the internet for how do you, how do you slide at not scary farm and this and that. And for a while there wasn't, you know, a whole lot of anything on there. Um, so, you know, once, like once I, I finally broke through, you know, all the different walls to, to get into connection with someone who could like, tell me like, you know, what I needed, how I needed to do it. Um, it was a lot of fun. And like, that was something that I did, you know, growing up scaring at like home haunts and stuff. Um, and then working at knots, you know, my first year I was, I was in infected as a squad leader, couldn't really slide, <laughs> couldn't really slide then. And then, uh, you know, 2019, uh, first year on streets, you know, you can't really, you can't slide. Um, so this year to be able to, to slide at knots in general, but not only at knots in ghost town of all places where, you know, where, where this thing all started, it was just like, it was so awesome. It was, it's almost like surreal because you know it's 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 something that i've wanted to do since i was a kid and like now i'm finally able to do it right yeah no i i, I definitely get you that and also that's why i'm that's partially why i'm reason the reason why i'm wearing the special ops infected hat because <laughs> a little easter egg to vincent being in there is uh his first year on you know and and infected and stuff and and all that and i remember hearing those stories too so no that's cool man i mean we've got to see like i said uh one thing that I like you did uh, when you slide is you kind of got up, did a 360 and turned around and stopped and then would look at people and kind of, you know, do your thing, which is really, really cool to see all that. And and I remember um, in Kmart one night, uh, I was by myself and uh, you happened to be in the area and you were just killing it, man. He didn't even know I was there. I was just kind of chilling on my bench and he was just fuck. He was one slide after the other just getting people left and right. And luckily for me, I just decided, I was like, you know, I got to turn on the camera. I got I to gotta get some stuff. And uh, I got some good footage of him this year uh, getting to debut his character and to to debut his uh, his sliding skills out there, man. What was the preparation, obviously, with, you know, <laughs> well, uh, with, you know, with, you know, going into this this year, uh, what was your preparation for sliding, man? I mean, 2020, obviously, we couldn't really do anything at, at – at Chapman or anything, you know, and every and all that. So how, how are you keeping up with, with the, the sliding practice on that? Um, so I will say that I did not 
practice as much as I should have. I mean, um, like obviously to, to be able to slide it on Security Farm, you have to take the slider test and you have to pass. Um, so I know, I know some people go about like a month out um, to Chapman and, and start sliding. I mean, some people slide year round and then other people's that, uh, you know, they just kind of show up and they do their thing, pass their tests and they're good to go. It's like, they never stopped. Right. Yep. Um, so for me, I went, uh, I think I went like once all of 2020. Um, and then I went, went about two, I went like two times, uh, before, before we had to take the slider test. And then I went one time in between, uh, when we took the test and when we opened, um, because when I was I putting on all my gear to take the slider test, my glove ripped. Oh. So the entire plate, like was, it was literally hanging on by like just a thread. So I was like, Oh God, like I can't, I can't slide in this. Luckily I had a, a backup pair of gloves in my box. Um, just in case I, I have backup everything in my box this year. Cause I was like, can never be, too, can never be too careful. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I did not want that to happen. So literally in my mind, worst case scenario, it was, it's two different like styles of gloves. Um, so the gloves that I had been using, it was a solid plate. Um, my backup are a pair of uh, longboard pl- pucks. So I was like, I know that longboard pucks are, are a little slicker than, you know, than the middle bearing plate. So I was like, Oh God, like this, is, this is the worst case scenario for me. I'm feeling <laughs> the anxiety of, you know, I'm about to take the slider test. My gloves just broke. I got to slide in on plastic hands now. <laughs> so I was just like, this is, this is the worst possible combination for me. But, you know, luckily I was, I was safe about it and I was able to, you know, pass the slider test um, and, you know, per- perform that way. Um, and then I, I actually made a, I made the switch to fingerless gloves this year, uh, based off of the recommendation of, uh, my friend, Jesse, he plays the rat at a scary farm. Right. Um, and I will say this, it is the best decision that I've ever made in terms of haunt. Um, I love the fingerless gloves now. I will live and die by them. <laughs> um, so it, that I, I did not, in, in short, that was a kind of a, a long way to answer your question. Um, I only practiced like <laughs> a, few, a handful of times uh, beforehand. Um, and it's, it's, I will say that it, it's almost hard to practice um, sliding because there's two different styles, right? Mm-hmm. There's sliding to scare and there's a stunt sliding, right? right? Where you see, you know, the likes of Decade Brigade, um, you know, doing tricks and jumps and spins and, you know, just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, right. And they're, they're all super talented, you know, to be able to do that. Um, but you know, there is, there is that difference between stunt sliding and scare sliding. Um, and I will say that, uh, I will mention Jesse. Um, he was, he's been my, uh, my running partner this year. Um, and he's taught me a lot. He's also in decayed. Um, but he's, he kind of, he helped me get over my, kind of my anxiety of, you know, sliding on the street and being, you know, very timid. Um, especially towards the beginning, like I was very, all right, like don't crash into anyone. Like that's, that's your biggest thing. Um, you know, make sure that, you know, you know, where your gaps are, you know, how to read the crowd and, and stuff. Um, so I definitely learned a lot. Um, it, almost like a, like a trial by fire type thing where it's, all right, I'm going out and I'm doing this. Um, and you know, I'm being safe about it. Um, but I'm learning, I'm learning as I go. Right. Um, or, well, maybe that's not the the proper way to to freight to kind of word that but uh i guess i guess the the better way would be like i'm gaining more experience so i'm becoming more comfortable with my abilities um in terms of reading the crowd knowing you know when to stop knowing what gaps to hit knowing who to go after and, and try and slide um so you know learn learning you know through through doing um, is like a very, very, very big thing for me. Yeah. So, um, being able to do that this year was super, super helpful. Oh, no, I bet, man. It, and honestly, you know, going out there and watching you, you couldn't even, you wouldn't even be able to tell that it's his first year. Um, because you're, you're, you're absolutely killing it out there, man. And, uh, it's Thank just, you. it's fun to hear everything, man. It's fun to hear you, you kind of grow into it. And then now you're, you're starting to fill out an area where 
you're probably just now getting comfortable about it and it's about to end. <laughs> I know it's about to end. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse and I have been talking about that because you know, we, we kind of have, have an idea for what we want to do next year. Right. Um, and you know, we're, we, we want to get better as a, as a pair running together and scaring together. Um, and we, you know, we've, we've had moments where we're, we're in sync. So now at this point it's, it's trying to stay in sync and stay consistent, consistent you know, and everything at right. that level. Yeah. No, it, it's been fun watching everyone work this year too, man. I I've had an absolute blast going to different events, uh, knots, you know, six flags, everybody just to see everyone's styles and everyone. Oh no. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the crazy thing. Like my, my style of sliding is like way different than some of the other haunt monsters at within ghost town mm-hmm. let alone knots itself but then you know you take take the sliders at six flags and they're you know they're they're crazy good too hey, right it's 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 just like bro like every every haunt slider has their own style yeah and they're all they're all so good like yeah. it, when when you reach a certain level it's just like dude like that's you're hitting you're hitting hard slides you're hitting aggressive slides you're getting good reactions and like that that's all there is to it right uh, we're going to do a quick, uh, quick little commercial break commercial as I call it. Uh, because if anyone's been watching the podcast, we kind of format these like the late night show. So take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk more with, uh, Vincent about his, uh, his, some of his funny stories and, and how he's feeling towards the end of the season and what's for the future of Vincent stick around. We'll be right back. was vincent on the streets right there hope you guys enjoyed some of those clips uh vincent man the, the staple of character appreciation month that that's been something we've we've done in 2019 uh you know me man i'm a jokester myself i like to hear funny stories man and i know you probably have a few of them maybe more than a few uh but what about what's some that really stick out in your mind that that's gonna make this one a memorable season oh man um i mean just being out there and like actually enjoying myself this year like that that's definitely is is something that has made it so memorable i think that you know not not in terms of like funny stories but just being able to to kind of experience ghost town in my second year um sorry i'm i'm gonna restart because i don't want to <laughs> um you say you just you just want funny stories you could, I mean, if you wanted to keep that in, I mean, that's that's something that's personal to you too. Like I said, this is for you guys. We'll we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, yeah. If you want to do some funny so, stories, yeah. Let's all right. Funny so, stories. let's see. So, some funny stories that I have. There's there's been a couple times that, you know, it's ghost ghost town is very serious, right? So, it you can't you can't pull the same shenanigans that you can pull in Carnival, right? In Ghost Town. Um, I mean, one one kind of thing that I like doing this year is I, I like scaring Calico Square, um, where the the train station is, um, kind of that whole area. Um, and if this this uh, this actually started like over kind of by Birdcage, I just asked, I just I told someone to sit down just in the middle of the street. They did it, and they were sitting there, and I was talking to them, and you know, using my monster voice don't don't get up otherwise i'm going to come back and i'm going to get you it was you know it's such an empty threat but you know when you when you look terrifying and you sound a little weird it's it's like oh my god like he's actually going to get me i don't even know what that means but he's going to do it <laughs> so like i i ended up having them sit there for like i don't know like 5 or 10 minutes and it got to the point where i guess someone from uh there was like a little crowd forming and they were like, Oh, like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're just sitting here. But I guess, uh, 
someone from like HR like happened to walk by and they went in and told my castle they're like uh, one of your monsters is, made, is sitting in the middle of the street so he kind of came up behind me and he was like what's going on and I wasn't sitting I was standing and I was just like I told them to sit and they're sitting he's like okay <laughs> and that, that was it so that was that was kind of something that you know I uh I tried to do you know throughout the rest of the season and uh I, I did recognize that, you know, have it, having people sit in the middle of the, of the, of the street of the walkway wasn't the safest thing to do. So if I did, you know, tell someone to sit, uh, I would have them sit up against the railing, <laughs> like closest to the train. And literally it was the same thing. Sit there. If you move, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you. And so I'd have them sit there and I'd make them sit crisscross applesauce of like cross your legs. So it's, it's harder to get up. Um, and they would do it. Mm-hmm. And I would go and I'd scare and I'd look over at them and they'd like be starting to get up. And I literally, all I would do is just, just that. And the, the, <laughs> like, they sit back down and they like, okay, okay. And it was because like they, you know, they're most of the time they're in a group and their group is trying to get them to go. And they're like, no, no, the monster <laughs> said that he was going to come get me. They're like, okay, what is he going to do? Like, he can't even touch you. They're like, I don't know, but I'm scared. <laughs> it, was just, it was just like, so that's something that like, I've done actually one of the speaking of of scaring in that area one of the funniest things that I saw this season um I was with our our town doctor uh Naaman um always wants to help people uh there was a group that he had scared into Calico Square where I I kind of met up with them and I scared them skimmed them scattering he he we he found them again scared them Someone lost their shoe. So him and I went to go pick it up and go give it back to the kid. And the kid saw both of us, you know, essentially converge on him and his shoe. And he got scared and like jumped backwards. And he actually jumped over the railing that like separates the Calico Square from the train tracks. Yeah. And just landed. And I kind of look at him and I was like, where'd he go? (laughs) And he's like, I don't know <laughs> where, where did he go and we both kind of look and turn to our right and we just see this this person on the ground we're like how did he get over there <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was just one of those things where it's just like what just happened you know it was like freaking a blink and you'll miss it moment right there it, it really truly was um i will say that uh one of the grossest and unsanitary things that I witnessed um, this year happened over in Kmart behind one of the planters. Um, uh. I was walking, you know, over there, and I see this person standing up, you know, behind the fog machine, behind the lighting, and I was like, "Huh, that doesn't look right. You don't work here." So I walk over, and it's this girl standing there, and I hear water hitting the floor. Oh, and I'm like, no. I was like, hold on, that's, and I look and I see this girl squatting and I hear the water and in my head I goes, I go, no, like that's, I'm, and that can't be. And then like, I look and I was like, nope, this is happening. (laughs) Seriously, she could have walked like 20 more feet and the restroom's right there. Literally 20 feet to the left. And the bathrooms are there exactly so i walk up and another monster kind of walks up behind behind them from the other side and the friend goes no no go away and i look at her and i just go no no out of the two things that are happening here i am not in the wrong (laughs) like (laughs) one you're urinating in public two you literally popped a squat in the middle of the street oh no man so that was Oh. That was definitely interesting, and and mind you, this happened like early in the night. Okay, that, like, that you it, just I you seriously, I've never heard a story on this show <laughs> where someone has popped a squat and took a piss in a planner in a scare zone. Oh no no no, no. it wasn't in the planner. It was on the concrete it next was on to the, the planner. Even worse. Like, oh my God, dude, I've never, in my entire time doing this show, I have never heard that ever. Dude, it, so I like went and I found security and I was like, hey, like this just happened. There they are. Go get them. 
And then I walked back around, you know, I did, did like a, a little half circle in ghost town and I found, uh, you know, a member of the management team. And I was like, Hey, this is what happened. Um, he's like, where exactly? I was like, let me show you because I, the a description cannot do it justice. So we walk over there and he shines the flashlight and it's literally like a three foot by four foot puddle oh, God. of just urine. And I was like, that's nasty. <laughs> yep. Um, that that I, was probably like. I felt bad for the custodian who had to clean that up that night. Oh yeah, definitely. Like because uh, I, I used to be know, one of those people. Yeah, that's. I don't even know. Like, I I honestly. Oh, that's gross. I as soon as, as soon as I brought him over there, I was like, all right, I'm not coming back here for the rest of the night. <laughs> yep, I'll be back tomorrow after they power wash the Sarah. Yeah, I was like, um, that's pretty nasty. And yeah. I was like, I like I had to make sure like I went backstage and I was like, hey, if you go over there, do not go in this specific area. This is what happened. And it just everyone was like, oh my God, that is absolutely disgusting. And I was like, yeah, I know. Like I try walking oh up on it and being God. like, what is happening here? That is so gross. Who does literally 20 feet away from I thought we were Literally. going with a throw up story at first because I was like, okay, oh, no. that I mean that happened. We went full yeah. blown. We're popping a squat and pissing. Oh yeah, and, and so here's here's the worst part. I mean, obviously, like yes, the bathroom is twenty feet away. In my mind, they were. They seemed like they were old enough to be there on their own, but not young enough to drink. Oh, so. And like from from the short little interaction that I had with them, it didn't seem like they were intoxicated. So it was literally, you just didn't want to walk twenty feet to your left. Like, even if you would have ran, I, I, I would have understood. I've been like, okay, that's yeah, an like I, <laughs> that's all right. This is happening, but like to do it, like you know that they, that, <sighs> well, you would think that they were like, all right, like that's that's a corner. It seems kind of dark, but like. I, I told I told one of the monsters backstage and he just looks at looks at me and looks at uh, this other monster and he's like, bro, who raises these kids? Like I like, who what what type of person does that? Like I just I don't understand. I, I don't understand. like I understand still... I understand when you gotta go, you gotta go. But at the same time, like you either you either go in your pants or you you find a bathroom, like you don't you're just in the middle of And everything. there's restrooms everywhere in that park, literally. Like, yeah, oh my god, dude. So that that was probably like I'm still worst. trying to process that, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I'm still trying to process that. Uh, it's still computing, man. Oh but, man. I don't know. So, I mean, aside from that, though, like there weren't weren't too many shenanigans that like I participated in in Ghost Town. Um, I do know that that there are some people that that like to party out there. Um, I think I know who you're talking about. I, th- I think I, I, th- I think you know who I'm talking about. And I think I know. It's a, it's always a party. It's always um, a party, man. It's always, it's always a specifically, party. it's always a possum party. An opossum party. Man. An opossum party. <laughs> um, and like, dude, like I, I ran with those guys a couple times this season, and oh they man, are just, they, they are something else, man. That's like, a, they are, that's a marathon. You're nice about to level. run right there, bro. High en- like literally the highest energy that you can have nonstop. Like I I literally every night like I go backstage and math. I'm like, bro, like how do you guys do this? What drugs are like, you how, on? <laughs> like how are you how are you consistently at an eleven? It's just like I mean, those guys are amazing. Uh freaking uh Aaron, Wyatt, um, uh, Vi and Lucio, like yeah. When the, when those guys are together, they are just a wrecking ball out there. Oh man, it, it you don't even know what's coming to you, man. And <laughs> sadly, I only got to see Aaron perform one time, which was on opening night, and it okay saddens me because my goal was to try to see him multiple times, and uh, I won't get that opportunity now. Um, so, hey man, take it take it from me. It was it's it's definitely something to witness. Oh, it and is. And hopefully, hopefully, um. You know, those guys, if if the if the stars align correctly, they'll have an opportunity to come back. You know, yeah. if not, you know, anytime soon, possibly. You know, at some point in the future, and you know, from I'm sure from from Knotts's point of view, like the door is always going to be open to them because, like I said, those guys are just on. If they never level. come back to Knotts, I will personally build a home haunt and hire all of them. 
stage is just a to be my to be my outside entertainment. That way, they have the freedom to do what they want, even if they want to go in the maze and have fun. Just yeah, be safe. Hey man, that's, just be safe. Don't. That's all I ask. Just be safe, and we're, we're you know you could do pretty much whatever you want. You know, yeah. just uh, just don't hit those boundaries. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe do touch them a little bit, but you know we'll see. Those guys are hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they're, those guys they're are awesome. awesome. Man, it but, is it, you know. Now we're approaching the end of season, which by the time this is released, it's already the end of season. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your what are your thoughts going into the end of the season, man? Um, this is honestly like, I mean, my my first year like working knots will always be special because I was a fan of the event growing up for so long, and you know, finally having that opportunity to say like, oh yeah, I work at Not Scary Farm. Um, mm -hmm. like that's always going to be something special, but this year has been like comparable if not surpassing that year in terms of just like enjoyment and excitement um 2019 like i mentioned it was like it was it was kind of rough for me um just because you know you felt you feel that pressure of all right you're on ghost town you're you're in the what many people consider the the best of the best at knots right um and i mean the best of the best all over the world right i right. mean that's where it started that's where it continues to to flourish um so you know I, I definitely felt the pressure of of living to expectations um especially with with the plethora of monsters that you know have come before me um and you know so i mean this this year is definitely way way more enjoyable um i've definitely gotten a lot closer to uh you know people that you know my fellow monsters and stuff um and it's it's just been it's just it's been a blast man like like i said it's been a party like all year long and a, a big part of that i think had to do with like my mindset coming into it and i i mentioned this earlier is um you know just wanting to go out there and have fun like like not even worrying about having a character um and i mean like i did but like i said like it it's it's good to have a character and to have an idea but like don't get lost in it and that like that would be my advice to to any kind of future haunter or um you know just any monster that wants to make make that jump to ghost town or make that move to ghost town or or any street position really is you know uh have a character you know have a have a backstory but don't get so lost in that where you forget what your number one job is right and it's right. to scare yeah like i always say um in terms of like hierarchy it's scare entertain you know and then and then character right mm -hmm. um if you if you can't scare them make them laugh if you can't make them laugh like you know look look looks look spooky right so like go for that ambiance of you know all right like i, I i'm not i can't scare can't you know make them laugh but i'm gonna look intimidating i'm gonna look aggressive i'm gonna look like i'm a part of the zone and like i belong here um so that having that mindset of just you know, I'm gonna go out there. And I'm gonna scare. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna try and make people laugh. Try and make it memorable, not only for me but for the guests as well. Um, and again, like that was a big part of why I wanted to do, you know, what I did with with my character and and the letters that I brought to to the event. Um, is I I just I wanted to have fun and I wanted guests to have fun. Exactly. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure I can ask you and like I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but uh no it's it, know, like, it, it is it's uh, that's what it is in the end of the day it's it's just yeah you know whether you get scared or not everyone's there to have a fun time yeah and whether you and, work and it that's, that's all it is yeah and and on, on behalf of of everyone uh here at nights of horror you know it, it, it it's been an absolute pleasure to watch everyone come back and and get into the zone of things and, and like it's, i said it's been fun to see you guys like come back and, and come back to the event and like i think uh i told you like the first time i saw you i was like dude like i did, didn't know that you were coming tonight like i i would have like you know like I, I i made you a letter and stuff but i was like dude like i would have had it like with me <laughs> tonight yeah um, i i was full of surprises man i i really wasn't announcing too much where we were going you know i, I wanted to just show you. up and see I just wanted to show up and, and just surprise everyone. Also, I wanted to just show up because if I tell some people that I'm coming, I, I want I want when I film them to be 
as as raw and authentic as possible. I don't want them oh, to no, have to I, put on I, a facade or anything. I agree. And I'm not saying any time I've ever filmed somebody that's happened uh, because they give me the best energy possible when I film them. But mm-hmm. I I do I I have realized that if I if I show up unannounced and just kind of keep to the shadows, uh, eventually mm-hmm. they'll recognize me. But when I fir- when I get in there and first start filming them, uh, it, it's some of the best footage I've ever captured. And, oh yeah, definitely. And because I feel I feel like like some people not not to interrupt you, but no, some people good. definitely ham it up for the camera. Right. Um. So like when they know like oh Anthony's coming, like I'm gonna go try and scare extra hard in front of him, in front of you know uh birdcage or calico square or whatever like i'm gonna i'm gonna interact only with him and make sure that he gets really awesome footage whereas like you said like where if you're just kind of chilling from the shadows and you know we might not necessarily know that you're there you're gonna get some awesome footage yeah and i think like that that definitely happened um the, just the raw footage part like when, when i ran into you in kmart that one night where i was just kind of you know doing my monster thing and i kind of look over i was like oh hey it's you yeah <laughs> No, yeah, we were, yeah, so I did it a lot this year, um, coming unannounced to some events and just kind of getting some, especially a lot of first time things. Like I didn't really make it known we were going to like a lot of places for the first time, um, Mm -hmm. just because I wanted to see, uh, what they would do if I just randomly brought out a camera and how they would react. And Mm -hmm. a lot of them, it wasn't even a decision they had to make. They were just on it from start to finish. Even before I pull out the camera, after I put out the camera, they were, on it i would say um and a good example of that is when we showed up to castle dark for the first time this year and we walked mm-hmm. through scare zones and they didn't I, I i think now they know who we are but like in the beginning i think we only had like one or two people that knew who we really were and mm-hmm. the rest of them they just kind of they would see the camera but then they would give us some really good performances even if they didn't even see us filming or whatnot so i mean it, it's fun to get the authentic authenticity of people out there um, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that if I'm coming down to an event and I tell you like, Hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to try to get footage of you. Um, like let's meet up here. Like I don't do that. Like I, I tell, I'll, I'll tell people, friends of mine, like, Hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be getting B roll whatnot. So if, um, you see me, you know, hit a scare or something, or if you, if you, you know, we'll be at these areas. So if, if you happen to be in this area, you know, um, we'll be around. I don't tell necessarily anyone to come up to me or anything because you know, that, I don't want to break the the fourth wall or anything or any illusions yeah. because I want to keep that story authentic and I want to keep mm-hmm. that authentic. Like I'll do my thing off to the side. You do your thing out there and let's hope we get some good footage together. You know what I mean? Uh, and mm-hmm. you were a perfect example of that. We, we would just, uh, oh, thank you. We, we, we happened to uh, show up. We would start filming you. You would notice us and then it, it would be like the camera wasn't even there for you. You would just go back to doing what you were doing. Um, but anyway, you know, it's just been a great season and I'm yeah. happy to bring back character appreciation month because it was something last year that when we didn't do it, I mean, we did a version of it because there was a lot of mm-hmm. home haunts last year that stepped up and saved Halloween and we owe it to them from then on out to, to continue to mm-hmm. support them. So we, we brought them on the channel to thank them and to talk about their, um, their builds, their struggles, their, uh, successes and everything. And it was cool to hear their behind the scenes of how, they got everything done, but it's character appreciation month, man. I mean, listen, there's a ton of people and I'm not dissing anybody, any departments ever. Cause there's a ton of people that go into prepping this. It all starts with the concept from the creative team. Mm-hmm. Then that concept goes out to each department to design costumes, makeup designs, mass designs, uh, maze designs, audio designs, lighting designs. Like there is so many people involved with just the pre-production part of it. Mm-hmm. that when, what you're seeing when you go to the event is the final product and what's helping sell that final product is the monsters. The monsters are the ones that help sell your story, help um, sell whatever you're trying to market uh, perfectly. And if it wasn't for you guys, as well as many other, like who I mentioned, sound, audio, behind the scenes, anybody who works behind the scenes, if it wasn't for this whole team and the monsters – there would be no haunts um, because you guys are the ones that ultimately sell the story and you guys are the ones that ultimately immerse the audience into said story. And without you guys, there'd be really no haunt at all. I mean, um, thank you, man. It, it means the world to us that we get to do this every single year to sit with the characters, to talk their experiences, to um, break that fourth wall. 
uh, between reality and 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 fiction and story um, because we here just want to hear everyone out. We want to provide the platform so everyone can can talk about their experiences, can talk about how they came up with characters, can talk about how it was after a two year break coming back. You know what I mean? It it, it yep. means the world to us that we get to we have the privilege to sit with so many talented people. And trust me, I'll say it now and I'll probably say it over and over throughout the, the, the month. But if we can have more people on the show, we definitely would do it in a heartbeat. If we had more time on our hands, if we oh, yeah, had dude. way more time, uh, if if we can ex- expand the month of November, we would in a heartbeat. Because there's so many people that we just couldn't get to this year, that we couldn't even get to in 2019, that we still want to talk to. Yeah. And that's why we usually do it year round. Um, we do a whole month dedicated to it, but every now and then we'll spread it out to different guests to come on and, and share their experiences. So from the bottom of all of our hearts, whether you know us, whether you like us, whether you don't like us, whether you don't know us, whether you're just getting introduced to us today, thank you. And we love you. And we're glad that everyone will hopefully everyone was managed to stay safe during this uh interesting uh years to say the least because yeah. we, we we went from you know a, a global pandemic to having haunt season the very next year uh we're not completely out of it but we're in a way better state than we were in 2020 and that's all that matters as long as everyone is safe everyone is healthy everyone can continue to put on one of the greatest goddamn shows in the world we appreciate the hell out of all of you guys for doing that. And we know we know going into this one, it was going to be a tough year. It was going to be an interesting comeback. But you guys you guys proved everyone wrong, saying doesn't matter the circumstances, doesn't matter the year. We're going to go out there. We're going to give you the best goddamn show in the world. We're going to have fun doing it. And you can't stop us. So from the bottom of all of our hearts, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for doing what you do out there. Vincent, thank you for actually not only doing what you do out there, but for kicking off Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Yeah, man. Thank you. I mean, I mean, you hit you hit the nail on the head, man. Like from the concept team to the build team to the post to, you know, it, there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes to bring this event to life. And, you know, we're, we, as, as, you know, scare actors, hunters, monsters, whatever you want to call us, we, we really are that that kind of final stage where we were able, we're able to help bring that world to life. Right. And, and able to mesh, you know, the real world and the monster world. Um, and, you know, every, every single person from each, each and every one of those uh, departments are absolutely phenomenal at what they do. And I mean, without them, we would just be monsters wandering aimlessly. We would look out of place and whatnot. So, you know, while, while we, we do, you know, contribute to the event, you know, it it is important to, to recognize everyone else too. And, you know, people who don't get a whole lot of recognition are the fans, right? Exactly. Um, with, without the fans, no one would care about this. No one, no one would care about us. Um, you know, you guys are, are amazing and, you know, it's, it's refreshing to know that, you know, the passion that we have for the event is also shared by you guys. Um, who keep coming back year after year some of you guys night after night and I mean like I said without you guys like none of this would matter I you know Anthony here would just be talking to some some weirdo that likes to dress up and scare people like <laughs> literally if you if you think about it I'm I'm a Scooby-Doo villain out here and, <laughs> you know so I mean thank thank you guys for you know all the hard work you do thank you for you know for giving us a platform to to kind of share our story share our experiences and, you know, share our characters. Cause at the end of the day, you know, we're all, we're all one big community, right? Right. Whether, whether or not we're, we're just fans or we're, you know, part of the, the artistic team, the concept design team, or, you know, we're monsters ourselves. Like, you know, we, we all belong to the same community and, and we all love the same thing. And especially, you know, not 2020 was a really hard year for everyone. Um, and not having the event, it was, it, you know, you don't quite realize how, how much this event means to people. And, you know, until, until it was gone in 2020, it was kind of like, oh, like, geez, like, you know, this, there's, there's such a large community that, that is loving and, and wants to have this event and can come together and, and bond over this experience, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's just crazy to think, you know, how many walks alive, 
you know, different people come from. And we all, we all come together to, to share our love for Halloween and, you know, not scary farms, six flags, horror nights, um, you know, castle dark, all the other amazing events, all the home haunts and stuff. Right. So, I mean, without, without the fans, like we literally are nothing. Exactly. No, and and it is true, and and I highly recommend anyone watching these episodes. Don't watch them because it's another Knights of Horror video. I want people to watch these because I want people to hear the stories that these monsters yeah. go through every single year, from creative from the very beginning all the way to the very end. It's not about and none it, of none of these episodes are about us. These are about them. It's about growing the community. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that's all, that's that's my goal as a monster, and I mentioned it earlier in the pod. You know. I want to, my goal as a monster is to have the same impact that a monster had on me, right? So I want to be able to scare someone and, you know, 10, 15 years later, have them take my spot, right? And it's, it's almost, it almost becomes like a passing of the torch type of thing where it's like, hey, I got inspired by this monster. And now I'm inspiring a future monster. And, uh, you know, they, they get to continue the event because, I'm sure, you know, the, the event will be here long, long after we're gone, you know? Um, maybe my, my kids or grandchildren will be running nights of horror. Who knows? Exactly. (laughs) I mean, Hey man, this this channel, I mean, it's, you've already got like such an amazing following, but you know, all it, all it, literally all it takes, it could be overnight and it's just bam, you're, you're the next Jake Paul. (laughs) Oh God, no, please don't compare me to Jake Paul. Please don't. (laughs) I'll take something like maybe um, you'll be you'll be dead the next. Uh, Let's do dead meat. You'll be the next Pat McAfee. Okay, I, you know what? I didn't like him at first, but you know he's been doing a lot of wrestling commentating lately, and you know he's he's grown on me. So I'll take that one. Has he? Yeah, he has. But, I mean, hey man, Pat McAfee. That's that's a pretty good podcast. Hey, he makes me laugh when he does wrestling commentary. So you know, oh dude, he's funny. He's hilarious, man. Just how into it he gets. But nonetheless, you know, again, like I said. Whether you like us, whether you don't, whether you know us, whether you don't, whether you um, are just stumbling upon us for the first time, if you guys are interested and ever wanted to become scare actors, these are the podcasts to listen to right here. The, these monsters give so much advice and, and as much behind the scenes as they legally can give because we don't want to – we want to get as much behind the scenes as we can, but we don't want to get enough to give away the secrets, and that's that's important to not only – uh, us, but the monsters, of course, as well, because there is a lot of secrets out there that need to still be secrets, and we get what we legally can get from them, and that's mostly just their character. And when we bring monsters onto them, it's it's about them. It ain't about the industry, like secrets or whatnot. It's it's it's, it's about them, and we really we pride ourselves on that because we're we're fans at the end of the day too. We don't want to know any leaks. We don't want any know any secrets. We want to we want to keep the illusion as if we don't really know anything other than who these characters are. These podcasts are meant to connect you closer to the characters and and so when it comes time next season and you see them, you have a better understanding of who their characters are. That's what these podcasts are for. Um and you know, I wasn't the first one to start doing them. I'm definitely not going to be the last one to stop doing them. You know, uh there's going to be many people over the years, probably even now that do similar stuff like this, but we have our own style of doing things. Uh, we like to focus more about the characters rather than um, secrets or anything. We, we want to focus on who these people are as people. And with this platform and this podcast, we are able to do that. And I am extremely grateful, thankful, and um, privileged to um, to get to do that. And there will never be a day... That goes by that I will never say that uh, I am ungrateful for these podcasts because I am beyond that. I am so grateful that this is my way of thanking a lot of those um, monsters. And like I said, if I can do way more monsters, I certainly as hell uh, I would in a heartbeat. I would get as many monsters as I could. Unfortunately, November is only so many days. I work a full-time job. A lot of these uh, people that are on the podcast probably work full time jobs as well, or go to school, or you know do grown up life things. <laughs> but uh, in the end of the day, uh, if we can get you on, uh, we love to have you on. We got we've had Vincent on. This is the second time now, and great podcast, both of them. First one was talking about special ops and his first year in Ghost Town. This year, he's establishing more of a character for himself, and we love to hear that behind the scenes. So, with all that being said. 
we'd like to again thank Vincent for being the first guest for Character Appreciation Month, kicking it off for the month of November. Uh, we have so many more monsters that you've probably seen in the past on the show and never I know for a fact never seen on the show so we're going to be diving in deep to a lot of different events um some more uh monsters characters and it's going to be a lot of fun uh we're just getting started Vincent you kicked it off amazing and I can't wait to see what happens with you next year man I'm excited thank you man I'm excited too I mean like like you said you this is this is such an amazing podcast and you know in at least to my knowledge, you guys were the first to, to ever do something like this, where you're kind of peeling back that per- that curtain and, you know, looking at us as humans rather than monsters. Um, so it, I mean, it's really awesome. I enjoy, I enjoy watching them um, because, you know, there's only, there's only so many weeks in a season. Um, you don't get to know everyone that works at your own haunt, let alone you don't get to travel to, to other haunts. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it's, it's nice and it's interesting to see, you know, other people who come from, you know, Horror Nights or Six Flags um, that are able to, you know, share their experiences as well and, you know, share some backstory on, onto their characters. Because, I mean, like I said, man, we're all, we're all one big community. So it, the, the more that we can grow that community and foster that, that good positive energy, the better. The better. I couldn't agree more. Vincent, I hope, uh, like I said, as this recording, it's it's pre-Halloween, so I hope you have a great yeah. ending weekend, man. End it strong and enjoy every last minute of it, because then you have to wait a whole year to do it again. I know. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Uh, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me on, uh, letting me help you kick this this uh, this amazing action packed month off. Oh man. Um, but yeah, man. Twenty two episodes. Ready. I'm ready to, for, Oh, I'm ready, man. 22 episodes, one down, 21 to go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm bring ready, them all. Man. Bring one, bring all. Bring it's, it's, I'm going back to my, my roots, man, what I'm good at. And and it's good to and now sit down and talk with people, and I can't wait to do it more. Uh, with all that being said, we have a great, great month ahead of uh, you guys, a, a stacked lineup of people that, like I said, we've never had on, and some returning faces that you guys enjoyed, and it's it's going to be different this year. Obviously, um, not going to be very many in person unless they really want to. With the case of Vincent and I, we filmed this at literally, it's currently one forty one in the morning um, yeah. because of my work schedule. But nonetheless, uh, if it was different circumstances, Vincent would be in studio with me and we'd be BSing and, and, and having a good time. But uh, we make do with what we can. What all that matters is we get their story heard. We get their voices heard. Um, we like to provide the mic for the voiceless and I'm glad we get to do that. So with all that being said, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Scaracter Appreciation Month, um, 2021. If you guys did hit that like button, leave some comments down for Vincent. Uh, he'll probably take a look at them, uh, every now and then to see what you guys have to say about his story and, and his experience at Not Scary Farm for the 2021 season. Uh, are you on any social media they can follow you or no? Um, I mean, just Instagram. My uh, my Instagram's private. Um, I'm kind of keep that more close. To me. I don't I don't post a whole lot on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys can follow me. Uh, it's VRD17. Um, if you want to, and I'm honestly really boring outside of haunt. Um, <laughs> I really am just a just a normal dude. Um, yeah, I go to work, go to grad school, and. Wait, wait for Halloween every year. <laughs> Come home, but, go to uh, sleep, and wake up and do it again. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. But like, I mean, like Anthony said, man, like, comment, subscribe. All that fun I mean, stuff, man. All that, all that fun stuff. This is a really cool video, especially if this is your first time. This is a really cool channel. Um, a lot of interesting stuff outside of you know just haunt and scare actor appreciation month. Um, so I mean, you you found your way here, man. Stay here, have a party. I didn't even pay him to say that. Boom. I know, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but nonetheless... You look at those free plugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, uh, but nonetheless, uh, if you guys want to uh, extend what we're doing and, and follow us even more, we have Instagram at at the Knights of Horror and Twitter, which we rarely use, but we tweet some interesting stuff sometimes about movies and whatnot. It's it's more my personal thing, even though I have a personal insta- or Twitter. doesn't even matter. Um, it's Knights of Horror. Um, So go check that out. But nonetheless, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. You're moving into a